In today's tutorial learn how to make an entrelock square just like this where we build the blocks uh, basically in a complete circle very much like a granny square going around and around and you can change the colors as often or as little as you wish and when you use color transitional yarn looks amazing. So let's begin to do that next. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. What we're going to be doing today is going to be doing entrelock in the square. This is when an entrelock blanket is perfectly square where the blocks build on each other in a complete circle. So you can see that we have yellow in the middle and then we go around and then around and around. This makes for a perfectly square afghan. We have four video tutorials for this kind of concept. So this is afghan in the square. We also have afghan in a rectangle. So for example say you have a bedspread and you don't wish to be square because a, uh, a square uh, blanket like this will not fit on a twin size. I figured out all the math so that's afghan in a rectangle. Also some people like to have their, their rows going all the way across to being the same instead of going around in a circle so they like to go back and forth. So we have afghan in the rows and then for those that would like to finish off their afghans perfectly I have afghan um, the entrelac borders just like so to be able to fill it in with half triangles so that you have that there because most people don't like that jagged border. So that's going to be coming up next so but today we're going to be doing the entrelac in the square. Now you may think I'm kind of weird but that's okay. I'll allow you to have that for me today. So the entrelac if you were ever in a class with me in real life I always describe entrelac as five pin bowling. <laughs> These are pins. <laughs> so if you didn't think I was weird already this is my sad attempt for pins. This is the bowling alley you're standing here about to get a strike. Yahoo! So what we have with the entrelac is that it's based on the number of seven. So let me write seven. Okay so seven is your magic number. It's like a Mickey Mouse. I got seven at one time with the flies. So what I want you to think about this is that you have five pins here. Okay and you have a gutter and a gutter. Okay and in the front of the line this is where you're standing there will be a gutter and a gutter. Okay so what happens here is that there's a magic number of seven. So you have gutter which is one, the five pinch which is five and then the gutter on the other side which then equals your seven. So basically you have gutters, you have five pins and a gutter. Okay that's how I get my seven. So in the horizontal direction that's what it is. So in the vertical you have a gutter, five pins and a gutter. So how does that relate? So what we're going to be doing is that this is the diagram that I'm working on and we do one square at a time. And if you can keep in mind the bowling alley concept it makes it really easy to follow. So for example say we want to build another block based on my gutter system right here and we want to build another block on top like this. So what you have to keep in mind is that the first time that when we go to start off we're, we're going to be chaining seven because we're just starting. But every time after this we're only going to be changing, chaining six. So one, two, three, four, five and six. Why is that? The reason for that is the five pin bowling if this is a gutter okay the other gutter must be on the other side. Okay so you have a gutter is already there so you have your six right here. Okay so you have your five pins plus your gutter. So that gives you a total of six. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay so every time you're going to finish a block basically the gutter is already established on whatever block that you're um, attaching to. So if I attach a block here and I come in okay this gutter is part of this one. So then you'll have your five pins okay and a gutter. So you'll be chaining six for that. So if you can understand that particular concept it's actually a lot easier. My whole thing when I'm going to look at these things and how they attach together is that basically I, I think about five pin bowling. So what happens here if, if you really carefully look at it here is that we have our first block right in the middle and you can see one, two, three, four and five. So there's your five pins. Your gutter is the join and your gutter is the join. So how many rows up do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five. Here's your gutter of the join and here's your gutter of the join. Does that make sense? So here's the thing. 
even though we're using the concept of seven which is a typical of our entrelac, you can do any size that you wish. So for example, say you wanted to do um, um, say 12. I'm just uh, pulling out a number. So what's gonna happen is that you'll have 10 pins, a gutter and a gutter to equal your 12. So when you go to do the number of rows, there will be 10 rows up and then there will be 10 of these things going across before you hit your gutters on both sides. So as long as you always keep it in square by thinking about it as a bowling alley, it makes a lot of sense. Well at least it does to me. So I guess let's get started on the diagram and I'll show you that in just a moment. So now that I've done my bowling thing for you, you may think I'm weird but it does work when you visualize it, is that we're going to start off just here and we're going to be chaining across and we chain our seven. Okay, because this is the very first block. So we have to at least establish the gutters on both sides and then come all the way across and then keep going back and forth until we have the uh, number five. The number five is the one, one of the most trickiest things that you need to make sure that you stop before you go any further from when you get to five and then we're going and these things are slip stitches. So we slip stitch ourselves um, going all the way back and then we start the next block going around. We're gonna talk about the magic L and the magic L needs to be established every time that you don't see an L and we'll cover that in just a moment. Today I'm gonna be using Bernat roving yarn. Today as we've talked about in the Tunisian series is that you have to look at the ball band. It's recommending a size six and a half millimeter or sorry six and a half millimeter crochet hook size K but with Tunisian we always have to increase our sizes at least two sizes. I'm using a 10 millimeter size N for this particular yarn today and it does a really nice uh, concept um, and it turns out really great. So you have to increase your hook size so don't follow the ball band for when you're doing your Tunisian. So without further ado, let's uh, begin and we're just going to start off with a slip knot and let's begin. So we're going to just insert our afghan hook in and um, you need to have a little bit of distance especially with the thicker yarns. For thinner yarns uh, such as this other example, I can actually do this with the regular crochet hook without it being a Tunisian hook because I can get all of that onto my hook without it bothering me at all. So let's begin. We're going to chain seven. Remember that the one on the hook does not uh, does not count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So let's establish the first one. We're gonna come second chain from the hook and we're just gonna turn it around and get the back hump of that second one in and pull the yarn through. So yarn over, pull through and just leave it on your hook. Slide it down your shaft just like so, so that the thickness is matching. So if you leave it down here, the thickness will not be consistent. So let's go into the next one, pulling it through and slide just to get that tension there. Okay, so we continue to do that all the way across. Now if I chain seven, how many should there be? That's right, there should be seven. And in the bowling alley theory is that there will be five pins plus two gutters, which gives you a total of seven. Just like this. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I've run out of chain. So the two are my gutters and the middle are the bowling, uh, is the pins itself. So let's move up to the next row. So moving up just on this block only, you're going to do this concept. So only on this block, you're going to yarn over and pull through the first loop only and then yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two and two and two all the way back. Okay, so that was row number one. Okay, so you can kind of see what's going on here. You see your five pins in the middle. You see your gutters on both sides. So let's begin our next rows. We just, it's a simple stitch. So we just insert into the vertical thing. Just, it's one strand. Insert into the vertical, pull through and we do that all the way across. And how many should there be by the time you get all the way across? That's right, there should be seven. So on the very final one here, you go into a ch the chain, okay, and there should be two strings, pull through, okay, and now you have your seven back on your hook. So there's your five pins in the middle with two gutters. So then yarn over, pull through one only, and then yarn over and pull through two, and do that all the way back. Okay. So the next one, let's begin again. So we're just gonna insert into the first, so you don't see me chaining or anything. You just insert into the first one, 
it's a simple stitch and you keep doing that all the way across again. Okay and then remember the outside it's a chain so there will be two strings. If you go into one string you'll have this unsightly gap on the edge of your work so make sure you go into two and then yarn over pull through one and we keep doing this until we get to the level of five and five is when you have to pay attention to the most. Five is when I screw up the most when I'm doing this on my own. So let's insert and the only reason why I do that is that I need to verify the count each and every time. So if you have um, for example if you do a, a larger one that requires maybe ten rows or, or even more you, I like to physically count just to make sure I'm, I'm not uh, out of balance and remember coming to the edge one. So there's my seven again, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. So you'll start to see it curling up on you. Don't worry about it. No big deal. Okay, so how many rows do I see here? I have one, two, three, and this is the fourth. Okay, so I got fourth so far. So let's insert into the next. And I can tell that it's almost a 4 2 because this is almost square coming into the edge. Okay, yarn over pull through one only and then continue yarn over pulling it through two. So I think I might have my fifth in here. Okay, so it's almost square. So what you can see here is that you see one, two, see I'm counting these grains. So one, two, three, four. This is the fifth. Now the fifth does not look done does it? You can see right through it. So what you have to do for this one on the fifth is that you have to start the slip stitching to fasten off. Okay, we don't physically fasten off if you don't wanna change colors but if in this case because we are the center square we will want to fasten off because I wanna change my colors. So we insert into the first one and yarn over and pull through that one plus the other loop. It's kind of like a bind off and what you need to pay attention to the most do not be tight with this. It's easy to have uh, to make these really tight. You will regret it afterward because you have to go back into these when you go to join other stuff to it in the future and so if you're tight now you will be fighting it later and I can't say that enough. So you come right into the final okay you see the two strings pull through and through and that is your first middle block done. Okay, so the way that I had you do it is that you can see that there's beautiful stitching on all four sides of this to be able to attach. Okay, so what I want you to do at this point is that I want you to fasten off this particular item. Okay, so I just cut it and I'm just gonna yarn over and just pull it through and I'll deal with my loose ends afterward. And so that's what it looks like at this point. So this is the center. So I'm gonna show you the next rotation going all the way around. When moving on to other blocks we need to look for the L. So right now we've finished off with the, the yellow block right here and we're going to start off with the next one. The problem is is that we do not see an L when we go to start with and I'll be explaining that to you in a moment. So what we have to do is that when we go to start we're going to chain six and we're gonna come up. Okay and what we're going to do is that we're gonna work our way back to this block each and every time and join it. So by chaining six you're actually getting the L shape that you need. Okay, this does not need to be done every time we do a block. Only when an L doesn't exist. So for example, say we're coming along um, on the middles. So where it doesn't, where we don't need to do it is when we come across the middle is that we're going to be slip stitching here and the L is actually right here as we go. Okay, so we have to look for that each and every time and hopefully that will make sense in just a moment. But let me start off with the next color and I'm gonna start off with the slip knot. I prefer that for myself. It just is good. So I can start off in any corner. It doesn't matter because I know this is completely square. Okay, so I'm going to start off right in this corner here. No rhyme or reason. I just can because I just picked it. So I'm just gonna put both strands over and pull through. Okay, so that does not count as any one 
any, any one at all. So I want to chain six. So in reason why we're doing the six, remember I explained the bowling alley. So this is the one gutter on this block here. And so if I do five plus one for the other gutter, it's only six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So as I just explained earlier, we have the L shape. So the L is existing. Do you see it? It's kind of backwards. Okay, so it's L or it could be a V in your opinion. It doesn't matter. But either way you need to look for that. So if you do not have the L shape to work with, you have to create it by chaining six. Okay, and um, in this uh, particular um, revolution, we have to create it each and every block. But going forward, we only create it when it's on the corners. To begin the next one is just like we did as if this block does not exist. We come in second chain from the hook and we yarn over and pull through. Okay, and then come into the next one and yarn over and pull through. So in the bowling alley, what we have here is that we're collecting all the pins right now. We're right in the middle. So we should have, if we chain six, we should have uh, six of these loops on this before we attach it to the block. So there's six. So the next one is right where we attached it. And that is your seven. Okay, so here's your, so the gutter is already, is attached to this one. Here's your gutter this side. Here's your five pins. So yarning over and pulling it through two. So this time we do not yarn over and pull through one loop to start and then two and two and two. We just immediately yarn over and pull through two. Okay, so let's see how we're coming across. So let's start into the next one. Again, and it's a simple stitch. That's all this is coming all the way across. Okay, so you have your six on here. Okay, so there's the gutter out. There's your five pins. So your next one is the next row up in the block. Okay, you just loop around it and then just yarn over and pull through two all the way back. So once you get this, the first block, it's actually easier just to follow the rest of them. So let's go to the next one. So we're just simple stitching again back. So because we're doing the simple stitch, um, I told you you can just change the sizes. They are end up being square to each other. So it's okay to change your lengths of your chain and to make bigger squares if you wish. So there's your six on there. The seventh is the block. So we, we moved up again another row in the block. And then yarning over pulling it through two. Okay, coming back. Okay, there's your six. The next one is the next one higher in the block. So I wanna just verify my count so far. So I'm gonna open this up and just look at it. Okay, so I have, and I'm just counting the grains that you can see. So one, two, three, this is the fourth. So remember, I only want five in there. Because the tops and the bottoms count as the gutter, which gives you the total number of seven. Okay, there's my six. I'm attaching to the block. Pulling it through. Okay, so I want to count again. So one, two, three, four. This is the five. The five. Remember before it looks the same. It looks like it's got a gapping space. So this time we want to do a bind off. So we're just going to insert, pulling it through and through. Again, do not make that a tight bind off. Just make it nice and loose because you'll be playing with that later in your particular project. Okay, so we're not done yet. We still have to bind off right to the next block. So we come into the next one on the block as you can see follow it up and just wrap and going around and pull it through. So now you can see that this block is completely attached to the next one and we're ready for the next round. Okay, so the next block to make this is actually just up here. 
the next one is out here and the next one is down like across. So to begin the next, do you see an L? No, you don't. So you have to create it. So and every time you do not see an L to work with, you have to create it by chaining of six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And again, it's the same concept, second chain from the hook. We wanna start collecting all your stitches again and working your way back. Now the biggest deal that you have to worry about, especially in this beginning round, is that your project does not turn backwards on you. We're only working with the front sides for this particular project. So we have to make sure that this doesn't twist. And honestly, it's gonna be hard not to figure out that it's not twisting because it, it looks completely different from one side to another. See, you don't see any of the vertical strands like you do here. Okay, so we have our sixth in and the seventh, okay, is the block. Okay, so it's the, the white block there. And so then we yarn over and pull through two. And we do that all the way back. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn my project. So the grains in this one here went, uh, appear to be vertical or horizontal. These ones here will appear to be going vertical. So you'll notice that the grains go in a different direction depending on what side of the project you're working on. And side not meaning front or back, just meaning on how it's turned. So I'm just collecting all my stitches going back and again coming into the block here I move up to the next row to wrap and then pulling it through two. Do you get that? So what I'm gonna do is that I'm just going to speed ahead and because I think that you should understand the concept by now but we're not quite done. We still have to take you through another round because then that's when it all comes together um, for a complete understanding on, on how it works in between the corners. Because right now we're creating the invisible L but once you uh, move up into the, the rounds of this the L is actually there for most of it other than the corners. And I wanna show you how to identify that. Okay, so it's a very easy concept. It's a lot easier than I expected. I've seen uh, and read other tutorial patterns that are really tough uh, really complicated but so I try to simplify it with the bowling alley theory because I'm very visual and that's what I need to learn. So I'm just naturally wanting to go all the way back. I'm looking for the height of the block on the middle white one to kind of give me an idea where I am in the project. So I think I'm on four because I'm almost done the white block. So one, two, three, four. Actually this is the fifth. So one, two, three, four. This is fifth. So I was further ahead than I thought so I'm gonna do the bind off. Again, don't do a lot of tension. Okay, and then the next one is right into the, the final bind off is right into the next block. Okay, so there it, there it goes. So we begin again and just simply chain six because there is no L to work with. So one, two, three, four, five, and six and then simply second chain from the hook. So continue to do this all the way around and I'm gonna meet you back up at the, the final of this particular round of coming around. So I'm gonna do this block and this one and then I'll show you what's gonna happen because I, I have to explain something before we go on. So I'm just finishing up the last one before I'm done this particular round of the squares. Now this is, I'm actually filming this because I really want you to see, uh, see the point of why you cannot go any further on this particular round. And it's not because there's another square already in the way. And the reason for it is that, and I'm just gonna bind off like I did before. So the reason for it is that right now, I'm just gonna pull some slack, is that I told you that we need to look for an invisible L. Do you see an L here? it's right here. Okay, so you can see that the L's are in shape. So right now because the, where we have finished is right in the center of an L, we can, we have to fasten off. We don't have a choice because we can't start um, right where we are for the next round. Okay, so regardless of it being a different color or anything, we physically cannot start here. 
okay. Because if we go to try to chain up any stitches you can't because you've already got uh, basically you can see that you've already got the upper motion and then you're gonna work your way across. So you're physically in the middle so just fasten off. Now I have actually tried in the past where I slip stitch myself across the line in order to begin the next one. You will always see it. I don't care how good you are. You're always gonna see it. So you have to uh, be very conscious of that. So just fasten off. Save yourself the aggravation and get your next color ready because we're about to go around. And next time when we go to start. So the blocks that are gonna join up here. There is no L so we're gonna have to create it. When we're in the middle the L is already there. Okay. There's gonna be no uh, L here because it's an outside and then there's an L there. So it actually becomes if you can physically see that it's just a lot easier. So without further ado let's move on to your next round. So where do we start in the next one? Well it's it's either or. Either way you have to do all this all the blocks anyway but are you gonna start off by doing it so that you already have the L or are you gonna do it uh, with with having to create the L? Either way it doesn't matter. So just for uh, speeding you up in tutorial reasons I'm gonna start where there's already an L. And how we do that is that we're going to start off with a slip knot. So we're gonna come in, insert it into the hook here and what we're going to do is that we're just gonna come into the very corner of the block. Okay so just look at it here right into the very corner and just insert your hook in. Now if you bound off too tight it would be harder to get that hook in but I was kind of generous with that. So I just wanna fasten on. So just gonna pull through and so that's the first one. So remember the bowling alley technique. This would be a gutter. There should be five pins and then the next block should be this, the other gutter which is number seven. So let's uh, begin. We're just gonna insert into this block. Okay into each stitch coming across. Yarn over and pull and collect. And you do that all the way across the block. So this is just like you were to do it as if you were going across on the chain. Okay and okay so we've gone all the way across the top of the block. You can see the five pins that are there and then we need to come to the joining block on the other side. So right so look at it here. So you're here. This is part of this block you need to go into this block here. Yarn over and pull through. So now we should have our two gutters and our five pins. You see that total of seven. So yarn over and pull through two for all the way back. Okay so let's begin again. So just like you did before you just it's just a simple stitch. Tunisian simple stitch coming across. In abbreviations it's called TSS if you're ever looking for that Tunisian simple stitch. Coming all the way across again moving up the block like you have already in the past. So this is basically filling in that, that space. So I'm just going back again. So I don't bother to count the, the rows. I physically count it when I think I have enough. My biggest thing um, when I start first started doing entrelac is that I was always creating one too many rows across. So I've gotten better just to visualize it and then physically count it and then just double check. So I'm coming back across again. I wouldn't say, I would say that the, the bigger yarn and the hook will make your project grow faster. It doesn't always look great in the thinner yarns. But if you're looking um, for a relatively quick afghan I don't mind these things and it looks really amazing. So I wanna count so one, two, three and this is four so this must be the fifth that I'm about to start. Okay and coming across to the next block. So this must be number five. You can see it's almost close to the other size anyway. So that helps you give an indication. So one, two, three, four, five and just counting the grains up and then just do a bind off again. Don't be hard on yourself with making it more difficult. So we filled in the, uh, the block when the, the L shape was there. But now we're ready for the next block but there is no L. So oh, remember that we have to bind off to the next block 
before we restart. So let's begin again. So you do not see an L shape right now. You just see a flat line. So we have to create that. So chaining a six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And this is what you already know. Just second chain from the hook. Start collecting going back. Okay. You should have a total of seven which includes the block that you're attaching to. Okay, there's your five. This is one gutter and then here's your six which is the block. Okay, and then just keep doing that all the way. So I'm gonna just uh, get through this block and then I'll meet you back up and start you on the, on the next block which is right down in here which is you can see the L is already there. So a few moments ago I left you and I wanted to finish this block off camera which I did and I just binding off now. So I'm making my way all the way down. I've got my five in there. And I'm making myself and remember when we bind off all the way we go into the next block as well. So right into the block. So right now at this point is that I'm looking at it. Do we see an L? Yes we do. We see it right here. So only we only need to create the chain when we cannot see an L in the shape. So for example right now we have the very center point. So all these ones in the middle uh, between the corners all have the L's there. It doesn't matter what size of afghan that you're on. That each one in the middle will have that. So you just kind of like diamond, uh, do a diamond shape all the way across basically. So we're going to start off and we're just gonna start collecting the next, the next set. Okay, so we're just going right into the block that already exists. Okay, and um, I wanna make sure that I'm getting my seven. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm just collecting so that I get my seven on there. Sometimes you gotta count. Just, it is what it is. So three, four, and five. Okay, and then I wanna do it to the join. Right there. So there is my seven. Okay. Yarn over and pull through two. So these ones I like doing better than doing the chaining of six. It's either way it's, it's no big deal. It's just a personal preference. So you just do it the same concept just filling it in doing your rows of five or five rows. Coming all the way across and just joining it to the next section. So when I'm done this uh, particular one here, I'm going to be at the top here. Again, it, there's no, there's not going to be an L, so I got to create it, and then I'll be back down into the middles section. So hopefully you understand that that it becomes really easy. And um, at the end of this particular round, it's just like what you did before when we did the 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 color. Is that we get back to the center, and we when we finish off, we're going to be at the point that will be in the middle of the invisible L again and because of that we have to fasten off and restart. So you can either choose the same color and just fasten on to any, uh, any of the particular points that you want to. You can either start off with an L or just create your own. It doesn't matter um, or you can change colors. Either way do not slip stitch it to get yourself reset. It just will be very obvious within your work. So to reiterate one more time, so I just finished this last block. We're going to start the next. I don't see an L so I need to create it by chaining a six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And so you simply just keep rotating around and around and around and you'll end up with the perfect square as you go and it does the most amazing look when you go to uh, finish these. You can see that it just looks absolutely amazing once you get it going and you can do the cutest little uh, baby afghans with this uh, particular concept as well. I've done a beautiful throw for my uh, couch as well. So that's just something that you can consider for yourself. So it does an amazing look. Color transitional yarn is really quite delicious with this and that's it. So we're gonna have another video coming up uh, where I'm gonna show you how to do the borders and to fill it in because most people don't like the jagged edge um, like sawtooth kind of look. They prefer it to be filled in and that's coming up in a future tutorial. So here's a completed example what I have. This is actually called the entrelock in the rectangle where you can see that I've created a panel that is not square by starting it off differently in the center in order to make it not square. And it's uh, it's actually pretty easy when you can think about it. So till next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarnspirations as well as the crochet crowd.com. We'll see ya.